Hello. As many of you will be aware, a few months, a few months, a few weeks ago, not in fact, you might be watching this in December or January, in which case it will be a few months. Uh, in November of this year uh, is the the big one, Scale Model World at Telford in Shropshire, in England, uh, Scale Model World, the IPMS Nationals, biggest in the world they claim, certainly the biggest in Britain. I always just imagined there'd probably be bigger ones in America, but maybe not. Uh, anyway, um, so obviously I was down there and I got to meet again a whole bunch of familiar faces and this time a whole bunch of new faces, um, which was just, it's actually, I, that's one of the things I like most about it now. And I was so liberating not to be competing. Uh, to not, in fact, I didn't even go into the competition area until Sunday afternoon, although I did have man flu on the, the Saturday, which... You know, I, I rarely get ill, and in the last three years, the only two times I've been ill have been when I've gone, to, gone down to Telford for some reason. Just, I think it's psychosomatic. You think, I don't want to be ill, I don't want to be ill, I don't want to be ill, and then somehow that subconsciously makes you ill. But anyway, I bounced back on the Sunday after probably giving everybody my man flu on the Saturday. I'm generous to a fault. And it was a great show, great show. Uh, we had a very small table frontage this time. The last show that we did in Glasgow we had this huge expansive table and we hardly brought any kits with us so it was like one kit here, one kit here, one kit here um, and this year at, at Telford we had this one table and we brought all these kits so they were all crammed in together which actually made quite a nice big display and as one does when one is at Telford one acquires one or two um, kits uh, four I picked up this time. Uh, two are going to be built for Sam Magazine and two are um, just building what the hell of it for myself. Believe it or not I've actually made a start on one of the... The thing is normally when I make these videos my workbench is, is lovely and clean and clear because whatever I'm making the video about is generally sitting here and, and whatnot. But th this this time I'm, I'm actually showing you in in action as it were and I have the most... I, 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 maybe you guys are like this as well, is I tend to sort of, if I need a tool, I'll bring it down, I'll use it, but I don't put it back for some reason. I just put it on the bench and after a, a short period of time, it just, it becomes this quagmire of tools and and bits of tape and, uh, I mean, just up until about a couple of minutes ago, um, this is the paint that I got in for one We'll just leave it. We'll get them later. Um, I had it just sitting here for like a, two days, right in front of me, and I just, it's like, why don't I just pick it up and put it away? Anyway, um, hold it, Mr. Hope. It's weird, isn't it? You go down to Telford and you buy these kits, and there's all these guys, traders and shops and whatnot, selling paint, but you come home, look at your kits, see what paint you need, and then order it online from those same guys, uh, and then pay the postage and packing, when you could have just I just couldn't be bothered on the Sunday taking notes of all the paints and then going around looking for them. But I uh, probably should have done it in hindsight, I suppose. Um, but yeah, the, the, the bench is actually in action at the moment with none of the stuff that I, said I was going to get started on uh, from the work in progress shelf that I've had for years. Well, uh, technically there's the Hellcat, but the Hellcat was actually... This is the second Hellcat, which was actually started fairly recently. It got its colour scheme. It's the remote piloted drone version so it got its colours on yesterday it's looking quite quite cheerful I suppose for a Hellcat um, this is orange wings because we have our orange competition for the club night in December because the theme is orange so I thought we'd do this one um, again as I said in the previous video built straight out of the box but the box being an, El uh, an Edward Royal class meant that there's photo uh, etch wheel wells photo etch in the cockpit resin engine so it's, it's a nice little kit um, but anyway uh, I was going to show you the stuff that I actually picked up at Telford. Four kits, um, as I say, two for Sam and two for myself. I've made a start on one of the Sam kits, and there was actually a bit of reason. <laughs> there was actually a, a little bit of reasoning behind this, a little bit of thought. Oh god, what a mess. Um, it's this one. The Azure 132nd scale. Codron uh, C714C1 and I thought this would be a nice counterbalance to the, the Codron that I did before and if any of you have read the article that I did which was my first one for Sam Magazine at the very end of it I talked about how you know 
storm clouds were looming at the end of the 30s and war was coming and, and speed was going to be required for a whole other reason because obviously the first one I built was a racer and now people need speed to just stay alive basically to gain superiority in the sky and I just thought this would be a nice counterbalance to build another quadrant and also one of the marking options is for white 13 if you remember the quadrant racer the, the C450 was white 13 and I thought again nice synchronicity there um, so I just thought it would be nice to build a wartime quadrant and have them sitting side by side again it's a very dinky little plane um, I mean I've got the wings together here and this is 132nd scale, and as you can see, there's the 148th scale Hellcat. So, so it's a small plane. Um, and Azure being Azure, a uh, French manufacturer, although it's designed and conception, design and conception in France, tooling and moulding in the Czech Republic. But you get resin and photo etch with it. So the cockpit is out of box, it's building into a nice little office for the pilot. Uh, and it's the paints as well, I've got the paints, you know, the cocoa brown and what, a very interesting colour scheme. But I did manage to pick up a Montex mask for it as well, uh, which comes with the, the, the marking masks, so I'll be able to paint on the numbers and the roundels. I'll tell you something that's very, very, I, I, I love this, and I wish other manufacturers really would would follow in their footsteps, I'm not sure if it's their footsteps or they were the first, but it's, it's a very damn good idea. And I don't know if I'll be able to show you this. There's the, the clear part there. There's the, the front section of the the uh, canopy. As you can see, it's molded. The clear part actually has fuselage molding. So what you're actually joining is fuselage to fuselage, not canopy frame to fuselage, but fuselage to fuselage. So if there's any fit issues, it can be dealt with nice and easily with sanding and filling and whatever you need to do to make that perfect join. And you're going to have an absolutely, well, you're going to have immaculate join because it's all molded. Uh, the canopy frame to the to the fuselage, which is brilliant, and it's the same with the the rear section again. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the the framing markings on there. Again, you're joining fuselage to fuselage, um, so any fit issues will be dealt with there, and you're not going to have any problems with your canopy. And and then with the masks as well, which I believe are inside and out, um, it should look absolutely spot on. Uh, the other kit that I'm going to be building for Sam. Um, it's this one, it's the Airfix 172nd Lightning F6 and one of the marking options I do believe was for a Lightning that was stationed just down the road at Lucas so that's, that's quite nice as well, I'll be doing a bare metal finish there are a couple of aftermarket sets for this um, I'm not sure that it really needs it but maybe the, for the ejector set if I can get a resin ejector seat or something that just usually sets the cockpits off um, but other than that it might just be built out of box because I believe it's quite a nice kit the the, uh, the box art with minus the tail plates. <laughs> Somebody forgot to paint them in. And for myself, I picked up, as I say, two kits. This being one, the Fine Moulds Kugishu D4Y3 Judy, uh, which is a Japanese Navy bomber. And it comes obviously the green scheme, and it's going to give me the opportunity to do that heavily chipped paint scheme that I've been dying to do on a larger scale. I've done it on the 172nd refurbished zero and I've done it on a little 144 thing as well. But it'd be nice to do it on a bigger scale where I can really chip relative to the panel lines and, and whatnot. Um, fine moulds being fine moulds, living up to the name, there's absolutely no need for any aftermarket stuff for this because the cockpit is gorgeous, there's there's rivet detail on the, 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 the sidewall framing. Uh, there's, there's plumbing, there's electrical cables, all moulded in, perfect. I will be showing it with the canopy closed anyway. Although it's shown on the box with the canopy open, you don't actually get that option. Uh, but I did manage to pick up, <laughs> I do like Montex, um, a set of masks. Funnily enough, this is both inside and outside. I don't know if we'll bother with the inside. Um, just because. Uh, but uh, that'll certainly help with that kind of greenhouse canopy. So, quite looking forward to that one. And the other one that I picked up, Guy Knock 30 percent If you're ever at Telford and you're there for the two days or if you're there on the Sunday, wait to make your purchases later, as late as you possibly can, because A, you might be able to haggle, and B, the, the trader might actually be doing something pretty special himself. And in the case of this guy, I actually bought the Karash from that guy, as well as uh, the Special Hobby Fokker D21. At the end of the show, or within the last couple of hours, he knocked 30% off all his kits. So this, which was originally £37, get, I got for 25 And it's the Special Hobby uh, Walrus, Supermarine Walrus Mark 1. 
and I got the Airsea Rescue. There's three releases of this. There's the I can't remember what the other two are, um, but it's a limited edition thing. They're only making 500 of them. It's the old classic airframes kit, uh, and it's also a biplane. And I've been kind of wanting to try a biplane for a wee while. Just I'm not terribly drawn to World War One subjects, so I quite like the idea that this being Second World War or interwar as well. Um, it gives me a more modern airframe, but at the same time the opportunity to do rigging as well. Uh, and also, <laughs> managed to pick up <laughs> so I, want to, I just hate masking, and if you can get, I mean this was £3.50, and for £3.50, the, 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 that's uh, being coastal, uh, living in the East Nook of Fife, there's still a lot of fishing villages, and it's still a tradition for some of those uh, fisheries to send a little van around all the little villages selling fresh fish. And that's what that guy is. He comes around every Wednesday, toots his horn, come out to the little van, buy your couple of bits of haddock or a smoky or, or whatever. Smoky's smoked haddock. Delicious. Especially in our, from Arbroath, a little town further up on the coast of Angus. They, they do what's called the Arbroath smoky, which is a smoked fish. Absolutely delicious. Delicacy. I used to remember as a small boy, uh, the fishman back in the day would, would park his van outside the houses, come out and ring a bell and shout, FRESH FISH! GET YOUR FRESH FISH! And ringing this bell and all the housewives would come out and get their fish for the, the day or week or whatever. Uh, yes, um, so speaking of fish, <laughs> walrus, uh, super and walrus, um, Special hobby being special hobby, there's a ton of photo etch and a ton of resin that comes with it, so again, out of the box, it's going to look perfect. Well, it's, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> let's hope so. Uh, but yeah, so. And, and speaking of biplanes, um, and going back to the work in progresses, the Heracles, I think I may have solved the glazing problem. Oh, no problem. And thanks to the help of Alex Maunders, another um, Facebooker, YouTuber, modeler. Um, he gave me a suggestion that sent me off on a tangent from his suggestion, and I think, as I say, we may have solved it. If you remember, what I was going to do was I was intending replacing the entire fuselage sidewall because it's it's it doesn't have the they do have a wee bit of ribbing, but you'll, you'll see there the clear parts there, if I can get the, the light there. There's a, an area around the, the glazing that doesn't have any ribbing on it. Not that that would ma actually really matter, but the idea was I was going to physically cut those whole sections out and replace it with an acetate sheet, clear acetate, that would give me the optical quality that I would need, and then mask the windows. But, as I said in the previous video, the masks are going to have to be identical to one another and because there are no pre-cut masks for the, that I'm aware of and if anybody knows of any masking sets for these please please tell me I suppose I could find out myself, I just haven't looked, I just assumed that there probably wouldn't be but the idea that I had, and I can't really use this one because I've gone to town with a Dremel inside trying to thin the, the walls to the, the extent that some of them are just flimsy I did manage to pick up, as you all know, a second one uh, second, uh, a later release which comes in this horrible grey plastic but the idea that I had was to get the acetate sheet get it all cut out you know get cut this out and get it cut to shape so that it fits perfectly so that there's as little handling of it as possible and then attach it to the outside of the, the second one and then spray hairspray through the windows onto the acetate sheet thus creating little masks once I remove that quickly spray it with aluminium and then put tape over them to protect them and then get them into position as soon as possible um, and that way I'll, they should all be identical. I mean I'll do a few trial runs on it. Um, Alclad, because I will be using Alclad, can be a bit pernickety around uh, mask edges and it can, some, because it's quite metallic, it can kind of peel like as if it was a, almost like a foil as it were. Um, so I'll have a few goes um, with that and see how, how, how it works, but I think that might be the way to go and that will allow me to get moving on that one. I mean I still have to build the interior yet, but uh, I didn't want to go and build the interior until such times as I knew I could do the window because it would be pointless if you 
builder and I couldn't see it. But also on the bench, um, aside from the Codron, the Hellcat, are, are the two BV-141s. Now you saw in the last one, I mean it hasn't gone much further from the, the, the last time you saw it, other than the fact that I've got the uh, kind of, actually there was a reason why I was waiting for this one. I was a bit dubious with the Hobby Boss colour callouts for the cockpit. As you remember, I showed you the pictures of the actual BV-141 cockpit and they did look like a pale grey, which would have been RLM-02. Uh, but the colour callouts were for a black grey colour. And I thought, mm, if, if the pictures actually, I mean, it does look like it's the wrong colour callout, but I knew there was a book coming out from Valiant Wings all about the BV-141. And I knew there would be copies of it down at Telford's. <laughs> so being the cheapskate that I am, rather than spending the, the £12 on a book that I would use for one piece of reference material, which was the colour of the cockpit, every time, every time I walked past the scan I was like, oh, I picked up the book and flicked through it until I got, <laughs> got the information that I needed, which was the fact that it is indeed RLM02 for the cockpit. So I was able to get the top piece on. I'm having a few fit issues with it. It does fit nicely to the, to the wing root areas, but um, it's this lower section um, that I'm kind of holding responsible. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sh show you this, but when it fits on, if it, if it attaches here, as you can see, it leaves a little gap here. Now, this is fuselage skin, so it can handle being filled and it can handle being sanded. If it fits the way it's supposed to, I mean, I've actually cut the flange that would normally fit in there and make it nice and secure. I've actually cut that off, but if that sits in there properly here, I then have a gap at the front. Now, as you can see how these masks come down right to the very edge of the glass, I can't afford to do any work to that at all. Um, this has to be perfect, so I'm going to have to deal with this area here um, in some way, shape or form. It's, it's quite tricky, because this is, this is obviously canopy, this is clear. It's masked, well, was masked, masked inside and now painted RLM02 inside as is the whole fuselage, uh, the fuel uh, cockpit. But So that this is the thing that I'm dealing with at the moment. Um, but we'll get there. And as I said, BV141s, plural. I just thought, I had in the stash a uh, kit that was given to me uh, by a YouTuber, Polar Bear LUFC, um, who I haven't heard, of, for, heard from for a long time. Uh, he sent me the old Airfix 172nd BV141, which was the old tool, although it's it's one of those refurbished toolings. And I just thought it might be fun to do the two builds side by side. So it's it's progressed at a fairly... It's technically further on than the big one. Of course, there's less parts. I did some scratch building in the cockpit, um, to, using the, the Hobby Boss one as a reference. Sanded all the rivets flat. I've rescribed it in some areas. Um, but the biggest problem was that its canopy was in three parts and it was an absolutely appalling fit. There were areas where the canopy sat within the cross section of the, the fuselage and there were other areas where it protruded beyond it. And there were other areas where there were just huge gaps. So there was nothing else to do but fill and sand and just sanded everything as flat and smooth as it possibly could and then just went to town with every single polishing stick and cloth that I had in the arsenal and uh, to be honest I'm actually um, very pleased with the way it's turned out uh, to the extent it's actually clearer than before. I lost all the canopy framing as a result but the, it was a very thick heavy frame that Airfix had and the problem was that instead of just having the frame coming down into the glass there was a slight beveling at the edges which had a lensing effect and because there's so much framing on it if you have two frames like that and a little beveling here and a little beveling here then that piece in the middle is basically a concave lens and it really distorted the interior so by removing all the canopy framing and then polishing it all as flat as I possibly could it's a, it's, it's a lot clearer than it used to be but Edward do a mask set for that and in this instance it's kind of an essential um, add-on, as it were, or ingredient, <laughs> um, because it will allow me to re replace the framework, obviously using paint, which is fine. Um, I might even do what I've done on a few uh, kits in the past, where you actually brush paint 
the, the framing because that puts it on a lot thicker than it would be if you airbrush it so that when you remove the, uh, the masking you actually have a quite a thick piece of uh, paint which does actually look like a piece of raised framework. Um, but because it's such an intricate canopy I thought it, was, it would be a good idea to get a pre-cut mask for it rather than trying to come up with all of that in one seventy second, which would just be not impossible but you know you know what I'm saying. So that's basically what's on the bench at the moment. Um, things are, are progressing. I managed to get the mojo back. I uh, built that little TIE fighter that you've probably seen in the previous video. Uh, that was great fun. I, I am planning on showing it with the X-Wing. I've, I've started on the base. It's, it's just very difficult getting uh, pictures of the Death Star, basically. Um, so I've got this bigger one, which is a, basically a bigger... It's the same photograph that I used for the little X-Wing one. So I'm going to have the X-Wing, which is red too, um, climbing away with the TIE Fighter at the back because I managed to get some... God, there's just no room in this place. Uh, uh, I'll show you what I mean. I managed to get from a, a modelling company green fluorescent rod which I've attached to the TIE Fighter. <laughs> as you can see there. Um, it probably doesn't look as impressive on the camera. In fact, I don't know if, I, if I've switched that light out. Does that help? Being fluorescent rod, it does conduct light um, yeah, yeah. Under under good good lighting, it does conduct light. And what I did was I just basically gave it a, a light sanding on the surface so that it conducted light along the whole length rather than just on the tips. So, I, I, and I could have put LEDs at the base here, in which case they would have lit. But being fluorescent, they, they do tend to it does tend to sort of conduct light quite nicely. Um, so I'll have the Tie Fighter and the X Wing. TIE Fighter shooting at the X-Wing and whatnot, just, just because. Uh, so there we go, that's a little round up of where things are at the moment, uh, what's been started, what's... Uh, in fact this will probably be the first one that will be finished, the Hellcat. Just wait to start weathering it now. Um, I've the camera set for the bright lights. Um, quite an interesting colour scheme I think. Uh, the orange and the red and the navy blue. So, it's this one here. So once the markings are on it, which will be going on next, uh, that'll probably be the next one finished. And I'm also working on a video for the Mustang Racer, which is going to be in the December issue of Sam Magazine. So look out for that one. Other than that, hope you're all well, and uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Toodle of the new.